Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garrison, and we're back with Pursuit. And today we are going to do something a little bit different. This is not so much a review as a discussion on our range finding binoculars worth it, or is it better to go with a, a binocular with a handheld style range finder? What are the pros of a range finding binocular versus going this route where you have two units? What are the cons of each? And where might I use them after testing all of these out in the field, the different combinations out in the field the last couple of years as I've kind of sorted through this to try to find a, you know what's my preference and what are the situations where I might use one or the other. So it's gonna be a lot of fun here. We're gonna dive into some of the details here. Really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button for us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put links to that down in the description as well as a link to our website, backwardspursuit.com. Tons of gear reviews over there, go check that out. And I'll link to these optics here we're talking about here today that are in this video. Let's get started. So generally speaking, obviously with a range finding binocular, any of these here, the, the benefit here is you've got one unit and it's your binoculars as well as your range finding unit. Um, that can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what aspect you're looking at. On the, the good side, you don't have, uh, you, you have one pair of binoculars, one, one unit that you have in your chest harness or however you carry your binoculars. Whereas going this route, you've got a pair of binoculars and then you have to have another way or another uh, way to carry a second unit here. So you can ob obviously will have some kind of harness here and then maybe a pouch for your rangefinder or in your pocket or something of that nature. So it's a little less convenient to have you know, the, the two units versus the one. Now, one of the downsides you have to a, a rangefinding binocular is that uh, if the rangefinder were to go out, the electronics were to go out, then you have a pair of binoculars you know, where a rangefinder doesn't work, so you have to decide if you want to repair or replace or something of that nature with a rangefinding binocular. You know, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, but typically companies don't cover the electronics on rangefinders as well as they do an optic. So you may have something like a lifetime warranty on a binocular, and then on an optic here, you have a lifetime warranty, but the electronics are covered for five years or something like that. That's not across the board but typically you have lesser of a warranty on the, on the electronic part, portion of the binocular uh, or the optic. So, so that can be a downside of the range finding binoculars. Um, one of the distinct differences though that we noted with testing all of these range finding binoculars that almost across the board, not entirely, but a majority of the range finding binoculars that we've tested out there have various color hues to the optics. And that's in part due to the range finder aspect of the combination. So for instance, the Bushnell Fusion X here has a little bit more of a yellow tint to it. Um, the, the SIG has a bluish tint to the optics or the binocular portion. The Zeiss, they're pretty, pretty neutral as well as the Swarovski. The Steiner uh, LRF here has a greenish tint to it. The Athlons have a, almost a, an emerald tint to them a little bit, and the Meoptas are pretty neutral as well. So you can you can you know maybe love or hate the tint in the in the binocular, but maybe you you love or hate that, but then you like the the, the rangefinder portion of it. So finding the right combination can be a little bit challenging depending on what you're wanting. Um, whereas with binoculars, typically you might have some color differences, but it's a, a much less distinct than with range finding binoculars. So it's kind of interesting. That was one of the things that makes these really hard to compare because of the different color tones that you get through the glass. So something to, to be aware of and note when you're getting into range finding binoculars. Similarly, you'll find you know, something like a, uh, you know, the Zeiss Victory RF here, fantastic range finding binoculars, nice neutral color, really liked a lot about these. Um, edge to edge clarity is very good for the range finding binocular class, but not as good as say their Victory SF binocular that had better edge to edge clarity. Um, so it's kind of interesting that way, but overall I would say as a general rule, you can get better optical performance as out of just binoculars if, they're, if they don't have the range finding function and then adding in a, a range finder of some kind. Uh, so. That, that's one thing to definitely take note of when you're making your decision. 
Typically, your binoculars, you can get an 8x42, like these are 42 millimeter binoculars, 8 by or 10x42, these are uh, mostly 10 uh, by. there's some 8x42 or 8x50s or whatnot in the rangefinder category as well. In, say, a rifle situation, rifle hunting situation, I don't mind a, a 10 by 42 or a 10 by 50 or whatnot as a rangefinder, um, but where that doesn't uh, work quite as well as an archery situation where you may want to be rangefinding or ranging uh, a tree or whatnot at 25 or 35 or 45 yards or something like that, at 10x, that's going to be harder to find uh, with, uh, with a, a binocular rather than the 5, 6, or 7x you have of, of a unit. So it's a little bit easier and a little bit more discreet, particularly for the archery application. So it's going to be easier to have this here and just range a tree or whatnot across the, across the clearing. Whereas if you have one of these on your binocular harness to reach in there and grab them and then find your button and, and range something that way, that's, it's going to take more movement. So in archery application, I definitely preferred the two unit system overall, just because you're typically closer in, you don't need the long range. With, with archery application. Now on the rifle hunting side of things, that's really where I see range finding binoculars being of benefit because you're not really concerned with a, a range inside of a couple hundred yards. It's not gonna make much difference on your shot placement with a rifle, uh, whereas with a bow, that can make a big difference if it's 25 or 45 yards. It's a, it's a clean miss at that point. So uh, much more conducive to this unit being used in rifle hunting. And a number of these have applied ballistics integrated into the software in the range finding. Um, so you've got the, the Zeiss Victory RF here. You can build your, your uh, profile, your gun profile with your ballistics, and it's gonna spit out the same number of clicks or MOAs adjustment or something like that, depending on how you wanna set that up. That does it really well, nice clean display. SIG has an awesome range finder display here. It gives you a ton of data things like your muzzle velocity and at impact of whatever you're ranging and a bunch of other features that are fantastic in the SIG range finding binocular here. So the, a lot of good things that way. Of course, the Swarovski has that as well. And of a more budget friendly, the, the, the Bushnell Fusion X here has integrated applied ballistics and it's a really good price point. So if you're looking for that kind of a feature uh, and, and are on more of a budget, then, then that's something to take a look at. Otherwise, the Steiner, Athlon, Miopta uh, all have just a standard range finder, but they all have angle compensation as well. Uh, so you can use those for the archery application. And, and of course, if you're looking for long range ballistics, that can make a difference there as well as far as having that angle compensation. So a lot of uh, options there. Now over on the binocular side of things, um, you typically, if you're gonna go this route with two units, you have a lot more options. Of course, you can pick whatever binoculars you want. Uh, and then whatever style of range finder you might need or multiple range finders. So you're not married to one or the other. For instance, you've got the Leupold, uh, this is the full draw four, I think they have a full draw five now. But so this is an archery specific range finder. It has some software built into it that is really designed for that. Whereas your Leica, it's the rangemaster3500.com. This is really more of a rifle hunter's range finder. It works as well for archery, but it has some really good uh, ballistic software, so it's going to give you some of that information. Um, and then you can also go just more basic, like this is the GPO Range Tracker 1800. Just a, uh, gives you a nice clean display of the range of, and the angle compensated range. So you can, you can have one or more. You're not married to one specific type of range finder setup uh, like you are with the, the range finding binoculars. Um, something to consider. Uh, now on the cost uh, front of things, uh, I've found that typically your range finding binoculars are quite expensive, uh, particularly if you consider the optical performance you typically get in a range finding binocular versus what you could get if you went with a, 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 a nice $500 or $1,000 pair of binoculars and then a range finder. Um, if you were to find something of similar quality glass uh, as far as optical performance, uh, you're going to spend more on the range finding binocular side than doing a two unit system. So um, it's, it's kind of a catch 22 there as far as what's gonna be best for you and what, if, if you're okay with a two system, a two unit system, or would prefer to have the one, very much personal preference, but there's definitely a give and take that you have when you're talking about range finding binoculars. You absolutely lose some optical performance. 
And again, like I mentioned earlier, good examples of that are the Zeiss and the 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 like. I'm sorry, the Zeiss and the Swarovski. There, they they have very they have the same unit in just a, a binocular, and the performance isn't as good in the same unit as the ones here with the range finding aspect. But you do have a one unit system, so very much a personal preference there. So at the end of the day, the pros and the cons here, as I see them. On the rangefinding binocular side, the cons here are you've got one unit. If, it, if the rangefinder breaks, um, it, you have a, a more expensive optic that doesn't perform well as well as a less expensive binocular. Um, and so that can be a, a very much a downside. They tend to be bulkier. Uh, you can see some of these uh, the protrusions that you get in rangefinding binoculars for where the battery and the, the compartments or, or the, the electronics have to be put in there. So they tend to be bulkier, but they're not always. Like the Zeiss here is very streamlined still. The Opta is still very, very good that way. The Athlon is, is good and streamlined. So are uh, the Steiners there. But generally speaking, if when you have those, uh, those electronics built in, you add a little bit of bulk, whereas the, the typical 10 by 42 is just not gonna be as bulky there as, as their counterparts. So that's, that is a downside. Another one with the range finding binoculars is with one exception here, there's no uh, threading for a, for a, a tripod adapter, um, which is a bummer because I do prefer that to use my, my binoculars on a tripod. And I really like having a, a stud here whenever possible, uh, but most of these don't allow for that. So because of that, you, this Aussieoc Bino clamp works really well. If you have something like this where you don't have threading, uh, you can attach that and it, it's an ARCA direct plate or uh, it's built in there. So you don't have a bunch of extra plates or whatnot. So it's not a huge deal, but it is a downside. The only ones here that did have the th uh, threading for an adapter is the Miopta here, uh, which is really nice. So you, the battery fits on this side here rather than the typical battery fitting on that side. So it's kind of nice that the Miopta did that so you can still put those on a tripod because the reality is you're still dealing with a pair of binoculars. You still want to go ahead and put those on a, a tripod oftentimes. So that's, that's awesome that way. Now another disadvantage as I see it with range finding binoculars is their uh, lesser optical performance just across the board. Um, that, and that was pretty much, it does not brand specific by any stretch. They all just performed a little bit worse than their non range finding counterparts. Uh, so that's a downside as well. Um, but something that, that is counteracted by the, the, the convenience of having only one thing to worry about. You're not having to have a range finder, a pouch on your bino harness typically going to save a little bit of weight as well overall as, as opposed to having two units. So it, there is, it is nice that way and, and it does make it easier to range if you're out glassing. All you do is uh, you decide you want to see how far something is across the draw. You just hit your range button and you've got a quick range. So uh, there are certainly some convenience factors that make these really, really nice. Now over on the binocular and the two-piece system here, the way I see the benefits here is you get generally better optical performance, like I mentioned, that is a downside over there. Better optical performance in your binoculars uh, and a two-part system here. Um, and you don't have to worry about if your electronics go out on a rangefinder because that does happen. Uh, most people have had the rangefinder go out. Typically, your electronics are going to go out much, uh, far, much before the optics themselves are going to, to get broken or whatnot. So, um, so that's, that's very common. So you're not married to, to one system here and you can have multiple range finders if you need to. And most of the time that you, it's more cost effective to go this route, you can pick up a really good pair of binoculars like these GPO Passion HDs are, are excellent in their price range. They've scored really well in our big binocular test. And then you can pair that with one or more binoculars to do what you need, or I'm sorry, range finders to do what you need. So if you need an archery specific unit, you grab that. And then if you need just something for general, uh, you can do something like that GPO, or if you need a long range uh, solution, uh, that Leica is awesome. It's just probably one of my favorite range finders out there, but uh, there's just more uh, adjustability and more, uh, more combinations you can go with that way and, and change it up as you need to without having to change an entire unit and so you're not, not as tied to one specific thing. Now another benefit here is that there are a lot more options on the handheld range finders than there are with range finding binoculars. So like I mentioned, you have all different, I mean, there's so many range finders out there. 
uh, the, all different price points, the expensive ones like this like all the way down to very inexpensive ones that can get the job done. Um, so you've got a wide range of just a super basic all the way up to super technical with applied ballistics integrated. And you can pair however, however that's however you need to for your specific needs. So you have way more rangefinder options uh, so you can uh, you know, uh, adjust that to whatever you need. So those are my thoughts on the differences here, some of the pros and cons of each, where I might use them, where I might not, but I'd love to hear what you think. Drop those comments down in the comments section. Tell me your experiences, maybe good or bad with, with any, any of the setups we might've talked about here or a different one if you have a different idea. I'd love to hear that. Again, I'll put links to all this down in the description for you so you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching here today and we will see you next time.